This man right here is Hunter Biden, the son of Joe Biden. And according to a new set of bombshell emails, well, it turns out that Joe Biden, while serving as the U.S. vice president, met with at least 14 of Hunter Biden's business associates from countries like Mexico, Ukraine, China, Colombia, as well as Kazakhstan. Which, naturally enough, raises quite a lot of questions. Because, among other things, these meetings appear to be in direct contradiction to what Joe Biden said while on the campaign trail, where he repeatedly denied ever discussing or being involved with Hunter Biden's business ventures. As just one example, here was Joe Biden on the campaign trail back in 2019. I've never spoken to my son about the office. And so how do you know? Everybody looked at this, and everybody's looked at it, said there's nothing there. Ask the right question. Okay, so that was a rather unequivocal denial. However, let's take a look at the actual evidence. And by the way, if you appreciate content like this, I hope you take a super quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button so this video can be shared out to ever more people via the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel as well. That way you can get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed every time we publish it. Now, according to the Obama administration's White House visitor logs, two of Hunter Biden's Mexican business associates, specifically Mr. Miguel Alaman Velasco and Mr. Miguel Alaman Magnani, it's a father-son millionaire duo, they both visited the West Wing of the White House on February 26th of 2014. And wouldn't you know it, Joe Biden was later photographed alongside Hunter Biden, giving these two brothers a tour of the White House. And these photographs, well, they appear to be rather important to these business associates, given the fact that two months after this tour, Hunter Biden sent this email to Joe Biden's official White House photographer. The subject line is, hey buddy, and then it goes on to say, quote, do you have pictures from the lunch I had in dad's office? I think it was on February 26th with Miguel Alleman, senior and junior and Jeff Cooper. If so, let me know and I can send someone to pick them up. Thanks. By the way, how was Kiev? To which the photographer then responded, hey, Hunter, looks like I send them to you on March the 7th. We'll resend in a second. However, this was not the only meeting between Joe Biden and Hunter Biden's Mexican business associates. That's because about a year after this initial meeting with the two brothers, emails show that Hunter Biden arranged a video conference between his father, the vice president, and Carlos Slim, a Mexican billionaire that Hunter was attempting to do business with at this time. That video conference took place on October the 30th of 2015, but that's not all. That's because less than a month after this video call, Hunter Biden, Carlos Slim, Miguel Velasco, Miguel Magdani, as well as Mr. Jeff Cooper, who is another one of Hunter Biden's business associates, they all attended an in-person meeting with Joe Biden at the vice presidential residence in Washington, D.C. And one of the reasons that we know that this meeting really took place is because we have photos of it. Take a look. These photos were taken on November 19th of 2015, during the seventh year of Joe Biden's vice presidency. And there is something that's really worth highlighting regarding the timing of this particular meeting, which is that according to emails that came from Hunter Biden's infamous laptop, during the exact same time period that this meeting was taking place, the meeting that we're seeing in the photographs, Hunter Biden, as well as his business partner, Jeff Cooper, they were in the middle of talks with Mr. Carlos Slim, who at this time was one of the richest men in the entire world, as well as the two brothers, Mr. Miguel Velasco and Mr. Miguel Magnani, about investing in a Mexican energy company. And so really take that in for a moment. Think about it. In the middle of their business negotiations, all of these Mexican businessmen suddenly get a direct line to the ear of the vice president. I'm sure that did not hurt Hunter's chances of closing the deal. Furthermore, it's also worth noting that according to the emails, besides this meeting that was photographed, which took place at the vice presidential residence, these Mexican businessmen also met with Joe Biden at the White House. However, it did not end there, because just a few short months after the meeting that was captured in those photographs, Vice President Joe Biden flew both his son, Hunter Biden, as well as Mr. Jeff Cooper over to Mexico City on Air Force Two. In fact, Hunter Biden wrote an email to Miguel Magnani telling him exactly that and adding that he will be attending a high-level meeting between Joe Biden and the President of Mexico, who was at that time Mr. Enrique Peña Nieto. Here's specifically what this email said, quote, we are arriving late tonight on Air Force Two to Mexico City. We will be there for Thursday. I'm attending a meeting with President Nieto with that. Jeff Cooper is with me on the plane and he will be with us all day. However, the email actually continues and this is where Hunter Biden, you can say, gives the game away a little bit because he continues the same email by, for one, inviting this Mexican businessman as well as his whole family to come and greet Joe Biden in person when he lands. But secondly, he also complains to him about going radio silent despite the fact that Hunter Biden acquiesced to every request that was made. Here's how this email continues. Quote, would love to see you, but you never respond. I'm really upset by it. You respond when it's something you need. You are the most generous person I know, but WTF. 
we have so many great things to do together, and I want you at the plane when the vice president lands with your mom and dad, and you completely ignore me. You always say you will help, but I haven't heard from you since I got you a meeting for Carlos and your dad. We have been talking about business deals and partnerships for seven years, but I have brought every single person you have ever asked me to bring to the effing White House and the vice president house and the inauguration, and then you go completely silent. I don't hear from you for months. I don't know what it is that I did, but I'd like to know why I've delivered on every single thing you've ever asked, and you make me feel like I've done something to offend you. Now that is quite frankly an amazing message, because as I mentioned earlier, it appears to give the entire game away. This message puts into context all these White House meetings and how Hunter Biden appears to be using access to the vice president as essentially a bargaining chip to close foreign business deals. Now the media can say that's not true, but we just read the email ourselves. Furthermore, let me back up for a moment and set the stage for you about this Air Force Two trip to Mexico, because the details of it actually reveal how involved Joe Biden himself potentially was. You see, outside of this Mexico dealings, Hunter Biden also sat on the board of a Ukrainian energy company called Burisma. This is the company which was paying Hunter tens of thousands of dollars a month just to sit on their board. And in the year 2014, there was an email that Jeff Cooper sent to Hunter Biden, which said this, quote, I met with Miguel Alaman Magnani last night. He has set up meetings with the Secretary of Energy and the CEO of Pemex for January the 12th. Pemex, by the way, is the Mexican state-owned petroleum company that's operated by the Mexican government. He continues, quote, is there any chance that anyone from Burisma could attend? However, there was a problem. You see, the president of Burisma, Mr. Nikolaj Zlochevsky, he had a visa problem in terms of coming into Mexico. But Hunter Biden, sitting on the board of Burisma and having all these Mexican connections, he stepped in to try and help out. Hunter asked his Mexican businessman contact, Mr. Miguel Magnani, to intervene with the Mexican government in order to smooth out this whole visa issue. However, it appears that Mr. Magnani did not offer assistance. He left Hunter out in the cold, and therefore, as a result, the president of Burisma was not able to fly into Mexico in order to finalize the deal between Jeff Cooper and Pemex, the Mexican state-owned gas company. This obviously did not look good for Hunter. It essentially jeopardized one of Hunter Biden's most profitable side hustles, evidenced by the fact that Hunter sent this email to Jeff Cooper shortly shortly after this whole visa issue fell through. Quote, going to have to do some serious backpedaling with Burisma, most likely jeopardizes my board position. To which Jeff Cooper very casually suggests having Joe Biden call up this Mexican businessman's father. Here's specifically what Jeff wrote in an email to Hunter. Quote, I am shocked Miguel didn't come through at crunch time. They clearly value the relationship with your family and they know they could sustain serious damage here by making enemies with you. Maybe a call from you or your dad to his dad. Maybe that shakes things loose. What do you think? Now, there was no response on Hunter's laptop to this particular email thread, but the casual nature of the suggestion of having Joe Biden call this Mexican businessman's father is telling in and of itself, and it raises a very obvious question. How many such phone calls did Joe Biden make on behalf of his son? Regardless, about a year after this email exchange, Hunter Biden flew into Mexico City with his father aboard Air Force Two, demonstrating his clout to prospective business partners over in Mexico. And of course, he then sent over that scathing email to Miguel, complaining about having introduced him to everyone in the White House and the, not getting anything in return. Now, if you'd like to go deeper into these Mexican business dealings for yourself, I'll throw the links down into the description box below to several articles, as well as to the PDFs of the actual emails, so you can dig deeper for yourself. And also, I was thinking about making several episodes with each episode detailing Hunter, Hunter's business dealings in different countries, in countries like China, Colombia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan, and so on. Let me know in the comments section below if that's something that you would be interested in. And also, as you're making your way down there to the comment section, perhaps take a small detour to smash, smash, smash that like button, as well as to subscribe to the this YouTube channel if you haven't already. All right, just to pause here for a super quick moment, I wanted to mention that the sponsor of today's episode is a super cool company called Secure. And they're a cool company for people that actually care about their privacy. Because listen, if you don't think that these giant tech conglomerates and all these different alphabet agencies within the US government are spying on your messages, well, then frankly, you are not paying enough attention to the news. However, all that can be in the past because with Secure, they have awesome proprietary technology that has all your messages and all your emails actually go through Switzerland as they're making their way back and forth between you and your recipient. And so let's say you're here in America and the person you're messaging is over in Canada, Mexico, or anywhere else in the world. Well, it doesn't matter because all your messages are actually going through Switzerland back and forth through from one to another, meaning that they're not subject to the Cloud Act and they are only subject to Swiss laws, which are some of the safest in the entire world. Their technology is awesome, it's proprietary, and they're a company that actually cares about your freedom. They care about getting the facts out, which is why they sponsor a company like ours, 
And best of all, they are offering a 25% off deal for our viewers, for the viewers of Facts Matter. So head on over to secure.com and use promo code Roman to get 25% off. And the rates are not even that expensive to start with. It's only $5 for the messenger and $10 for the email and messenger combo. And they even offer a seven day free trial. So again, head on over to secure.com, use promo code Roman, save some money and support an awesome sponsor. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and most importantly, Stay free.